and ahead in sports this evening. All is set for the 2018 World Cup after the draw in Russia. We've got the details of these stories for you here on the special edition of News 360, including the latest from the world of entertainment. We're streaming live on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now, the National Farmers' Day is supposed to honor farmers, but are farmers really honored? Well, some vegetable farmers in Accra have been busy on their farms, caring less about the national holiday. To them, there are more pressing needs to attend to. Catherine from Poma has the rest of the story. The usual busy streets of Accra, virtually empty, Businesses are closed and workers giving the day off to rest in honor of Ghanaian farmers. The first Friday of December every year is set aside as Farmer's Day, a trend that has been followed for the past 33 years. It's a holiday and everybody is supposed to be resting from work, especially our very gallant farmers from their hard work in providing food for the country and even for export in recent times. But right behind me is a farmer busy on his farm. So I've been wondering, what does this day mean to this farmer and others? To these farmers at the vegetable garden at 37 in Accra, the welfare of their vegetables is paramount. You know that farmers, this thing, they work there. You know how something like a holiday like this. Just any time farm need some people inside. Let the holiday come because some people they go, but people they inside too. You know, but you know if you live in like this. See this place itself, what we're making it. Now it won't water us, but still, you know, get what they eat. So, all live here, go. You know, can live house like that. Abdullah says there are more pressing needs they want addressed than sitting idle to mark the day. We need markets for our produce. We in Kepo's harvest losses because there are no buyers. This has been the basis for people to question the impact of the Farmers' Day celebration on poor farmers. They remain poor as the rich who engage in large-scale commercial farming receive the awards. An expert with the Agriculture Workers' Union want the whole award scheme reviewed. Themselves are complaining about the awards that are given to them. Some are not happy with them. They thought that the awards could be something else than what they are being given. All these things require what? Uh, review. The mere fact that you are awarding somebody does not mean that you can award the person whatever you think pleases you. It's been 33 years of honoring farmers through Farmers' Day, but the challenges faced by the 21st century farmer is no different from what the Gold Coast farmer went through. Interestingly, the amount allocated to the Ministry of Agriculture, which is already inadequate, was cut by 21% in the 2018 budget. It takes more than declaring a holiday to honor these farmers. Availability of farm inputs and best agronomic practices, access to credit facilities and the ready market to them is the best honor anybody can give them. Catherine Frimpoma, TV3 News, Accra. And the General Agricultural Workers Union has proposed a total scrap of the public holiday declared to celebrate farmers because it says government loses between 60 to 65 million cities through such holidays. GAU is proposing the amount lost is rather invested into agriculture. The General Agricultural Workers Union made observation in its statement to commemorate the Farmers' Day. It's lauded farmers for their hard work in improving their crop yield and producing to feed the entire country. But Gao was extremely sad about the consistent declaration of Farmers' Day as public holidays. 
According to Gao, such holidays are not beneficial to the farmers and should be reviewed. It argued that such public holidays cost the state between 60 to 65 million cities. Through its general secretary, Dred Karwe, Gao has suggested that the public holiday should be scrapped. Apart from the fact that most of our funding sources are taken off, we are also supposed to now become more productive than before. Mm. You know, we, and to do that is to eliminate areas of cost, reduce it where possible, and then be more innovative and do things a new way. In a related development, the union has commended government for its planting for food program. Under the program, about 125 million Canadian dollars is to be used to produce cereals. So far, more than 200,000 farmers and extension officers have been trained. But Gao has warned government to not import genetically modified foods, GMOs, and seeds for farmers to use under the program. The fact that uh, much of the seed cannot be produced immediately here, uh, it, uh, the seed has to be imported. So we are cautioning that uh, we should be careful uh, when we are importing the seed for the plant for food and jobs program. You're on News 360, and we are trying to speak to Philip Abayori. He is the president of the Ghana Agriculture Chamber of Commerce, and he has joined me on Skype right now. Philip, good to speak to you. Good evening. Can I say Happy Farmers' Day to you? Yeah, Happy Farmers, happy farmers Day to you too. All right. Uh, Philip, you've heard the argument. Some farmers are calling for the total scrap of the holiday. They think it's a total waste of time since most Ghanaians are not farmers. What do you make of this, Philip? I think it's out of place because um, the farmers and the agricultural sector auxiliary uh, uh, practitioners in Ghana have worked hard to feed our nation over the past 33 years mm. and since independence. Mm. And as you are aware, Nothing is good than you being recognized for what you have done or being rewarded for what mm -hmm. achievements you have made. Mm -hmm. So I think that giving opportunity for the farmers of Ghana to be awarded and setting out a day mm -hmm. as, as a statutory holiday for them in recognition of the tireless job that they do every day, ensuring that our citizens are fed mm. and also guaranteeing food security. It is one of the best that has ever happened in the history of Ghana. Mm. And we need to commend government for continuously ensuring that this holiday is observed mm. and then rewarding the deserving farmers who mm. continue through trials and difficulties mm to produce food to feed Ghana. I think anybody who is making a suggestion of such have to reconsider his decision because why do we award people? Why do we set days apart mm. to recognize people? Mm. It's for prosperity and for history. Let me give you an example. Yeah. If a farmer is awarded as it is and he puts his certificate, Mm. by the war, signed by the President of the Republic of Ghana. Mm. His generation will come to see that their forefathers were farmers and this is what they have done and they will also continue it because they will want to also get such an award. Mm. It's like football. It's like about any other job or, or profession that people are recognized for the best that they put in. So we should uh, rather be very grateful. Right, Philip, but the farmers are saying that we should push that money into investing more into agriculture. Is there no reason why you should agree with them yeah. at least? Even Let if me tell you, it's the, the, very simple. Mm. How much is that money that is being used to award the farmers that can really solve problems in the agricultural sector? Mm. How much is it? It's a very meager sum. And I think that we should rather appreciate that the farmers are getting this recognition, not only the award, but the prestige of it, 
that across the country from the rural areas, people who are feeding us, we don't even recognize their effort. We drive past by our cars, give them any price of whatever they produce. And uh, for the state of Ghana to do this, we need to commend the state and we need to continue to appreciate. Because um, I think when you were in school, at any time when they are punishing you, they say go and farm. And farming or agriculture, for instance, has become a background kind of job that they believe that the less privileged are the people who oh. have to be there. Today, it is a game changer. Mm. Agribusiness is one of the thriving business that will try, I mean, will, will save the world. Right. And I think that we need to maintain this momentum to allow our youth and our new generation to mm. have interest into agriculture, knowing very well that there are rewards that will be given if you do well. So it is right. something that we should consider to let it stay, uh, irrespective of either a day is set aside and somebody thinks that uh, that day would have been productive. Every day is productive uh, is productive for a farmer in the 365 days. If one day is given to him, that he should also enjoy and know that this day, stay home, and then know that you are being recognized for the, your, your effort. I think it is not out of place at all. Okay, Philip Aboyera is the president of the Ghana Agriculture Chamber of Commerce, and he was reacting to called by some members of GAU that the farmers' day holiday should be scrapped to them. It doesn't benefit, and government loses between 60 to 65 million, and they say that money should be reinvested into agriculture. News 360 Skype interview is brought to you by MTN, everywhere you go. As Ghana marks the 33rd Farmers' Day, women farmers in parts of the country want government to institute policies to increase female participation in agriculture. Stanley Niblo reports interest of most women farmers are waning due to lack of support. Agriculture is considered the mainstay of the economy of most developing countries, such as Ghana. Statistics indicate that the sector alone employs about 44% of the country's working force. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, between 60 and 70% of women are into farming, with majority in rural communities. The research also suggests that most farms are owned by women. 48-year-old Efia Mensma is a farmer at Danso, near Adeso, in the Upper West Achim District. The livelihood of her family and others in the community is dependent on the little cash crop farm she owns. In spite of her contribution to the national food basket, she has never been recognized, even at the district level. Women farmers go through a lot to cultivate their farms. In order to ensure that the country is food secured, farmers like Efia Mensima resort to the use of the limited resources at their disposal in cultivating large hectares of farmland. But this does not come easy. Farmers here solely depend on rain for irrigation activities. A dam will solve parts of our problems. Because I don't receive any support, I use hoes and cutlasses to help myself. It is frustrating. She is also a trader, and her intention of going into farming was to raise money to support her business. For many, the celebration of Farmer's Day has not benefited them. I have Farmer's Day and I have to go to the farm and go to the farm. Because I have to go to the farm and I have to go to the farm and I have to go to the farm. I have to go to the farm and I have to go to the farm and I have to go to we will not attend the Farmers' Day celebration because no one cares about us in those communities. They only come for the food stuff we have told for and leave us with nothing. Janet Mfako is another female farmer in the Gang West municipality. Although she lacks resources and support, she has cultivated 20 acres of maize, cassava, plantain and pepper. In 2015, she was adjudged the Gang West Best District Farmer. Also in 2016, she was adjudged the Greater Accra Regional Best Female Farmer. But this year, 
she was not nominated for awards because she was not able to maintain the 20-acre farm she has cultivated, owing to lack of support. Janet Mfafu, like other peasant female farmers, use basic farm implements like the hoe and the cutler. <laughs> I was born in a village, so it is farming that I do. Through this, I have been able to cater for the educational needs of my children, but we need government support. In the midst of lack of irrigation facilities and labor in southern Ghana, female farmers dwell on their little energies to earn a living. For most women farmers in southern Ghana, all year round farming is their desire. But this can only be possible through the provision of reliable irrigation facilities. It is evident that in the midst of lack of resources, women are still doing well when it comes to agriculture, especially farming. However, access to funds to enable them maintain their farms has been a major challenge. Government must consider prioritizing policies that will push more women into farming. Stanley Nibleu, TV3 News. Go on, sir. Now, despite the provision of a reliable irrigation system and ready market, post harvest loss still remains a major challenge facing smallholder farmers. Local rice farmers at Sogakope in the Volta region are at their wits' end to find a solution, but wants urgent intervention from government to get results. Ghana currently imports over $500 million worth of foreign rice annually. Though local rice farmers do not support a total ban on importation of foreign rice at the expense of local production, they believe policies on restriction must be enforced to give the local rice farmers comparative advantage. That can be the only drive to promote local production to increase volumes of, of rice production in the country. Those people have got a lot of advantages over African farmers. They've got all the equipment, the technology is very high, and we are still struggling. Everything that we do is labor intensive. And it's unfair to try and compare a farmer in Africa with a farmer in Europe. Farmers say demand for local rice, which is a staple food in Ghana, is growing faster. They attributed this to awareness creation among Ghanaians on health benefits of local rice. Gadko Company Limited in Sagakope produces three tons of rice per hour, but officials believe the company can do more if given the needed support. The capacity of the machine is that it can work for 22 hours, but because of manpower issues and electricity cost and other things, I think we work for just eight hours. Right from the farm, the harvested rice goes through the elevator, drying machine, and then onto the silos where it stays for two weeks to prevent more broken rice. The rice is then processed and separated into grades packed in the various sacks ready for the market. Managing Director for Gadco Company Limited, Mokozu, said Ghana has enough capacity to produce the quality of rice to meet consumer needs in Ghana. Ghana has got the highest potential of producing rice, not only just rice but high quality rice. And that rice can actually be very affordable to final consumer. Farmers explain local rice production in the country is now receiving support through marketing. But this does not come without huge electricity costs. Now we are paying electricity be one hectare we are paying uh, 10 million. Previously we used to have issues with marketing but thankfully this year we have a, a, a collaboration with uh, Copa. Rienko and then uh, that marketing problem is solved. So what we are hoping from government is that there will be sure, first of all a policy that should protect farmers from the electricity tariff rates. Post harvest losses also has dealt a big blow to them. The work is very good. We only need government to extend our lands. While 2017 has witnessed an increase in the purchase of local rice over imported ones, local rice farm managers believe developing and sustaining the sector is not the sole responsibility of government. Rice is a major staple food widely consumed in Ghana. And as agriculture is developing, local rice farmers are producing quality long-grain rice. There is therefore a call on Ghanaians to develop the taste 
for Made in Ghana Rice. Smallholder farmers at Sogakope now have an all-year-round farming opportunity through the pump house irrigation from the Volta Lake that distributes water to the various farm fields. And still on agriculture, tomato farmers in Tobodom in Techiman North of the Bono Ahafo region are complaining their produce are going waste due to unavailability of ready market. Johnson Techi reports cultivated tomatoes are going bad in farms. About 90% of farmers in Tobodom cultivate tomato. On a good harvesting period, the tomato farmers of Trabadum could load over 40 heavy-duty trucks of tomatoes to other urban centers. Farmers use motor kings and Kia trucks to transport their produce. They are charged 10 cities for a box of tomato from their farms to their township. Whilst a laborer charges 20 cities for the day's job for harvesting of the tomato. This is costly according to the farmers. The farmers also claim they have secured loans of between 8,000 to 10,000 cities from their banks to cultivate on their farms, but consistently their produce go waste due to unavailable markets. A tomato farmer, Apia Kofi, pleaded with the government to establish tomato factory at Twabadom under the One District One Factory policy to buy their produce. <laughs> We are pleading with government to establish a tomato factory at Tewadon for us. This will really be a great relief to farmers here. A tomato seller, Yam Mary, also pleaded with the government to suspend the importation of foreign tomato into the country to help the local market thrive. The district chief executive of Techiman North, Peter Mensa, assured the establishment of tomato factory at Techiman North would be enforced to remedy the situation. Government at this time is embarking on an industrialization agenda of which you can count of the one district, one factory, and so on and so forth. And the government is committed to helping the people of Techiman North, especially Chobodo. Let's go to Tontro in the East Achim municipality of the Eastern region where farmers are producing low yields. Now even Nikwe has been trying to find out why. The Tontro community in the East Achim municipality of the Eastern region has an aged population who are predominantly farmers. They produce several crops from planting, cocoa and maize to feed adjoining communities and districts. But their potential to produce more is challenged. They have no farming input. One acre is here 12 bags. Each acre should yield 12 bags of cocoa. Without the inputs, the yield is as low as 3 bags. This affects us financially. The mass players delay. Unduly giving excuses such as lack of pesticides, chemicals, fuel, or spraying machine. The support we get is minimal. Some also raise concerns on government new plans to sell cocoa fertilizers to them. The government is planning to sell fertilizer at 80 cities per bag to farmers. This is too expensive for farmers to bear. The East Achim Agriculture Director, Charles Blay, considered there was a delay in supplying inputs to farmers, but spoke about plans to address the challenge. Those in charge of procurement need to plan ahead. They uh, uh, start the procurement process very early so that uh, inputs are delivered to the districts very early. If uh, for next year we can start the procurement process as early as in January, so that by February, the inputs are ready. He also reacted to concerns that fertilizers were being sold to farmers. They don't uh, you know, uh, uh, find it very necessary to use it. They just put it aside and then uh, uh, do their own thing. So the uh, government has found it necessary to let them also contribute. It is still subsidized. He told us his outfit cannot perform effectively because it is under-resourced. Staff have only three motorbikes. As for vehicle, it's, it's nothing to write, write home about. 
if you need to move it, you may have to push it. It yeah. uh, doesn't make it possible for us to reach uh, uh, our targets. Now, 58-year-old Philip Kweku Ajimine of Doma West in the Bono Ahafo region has been adjudged the 2017 National Best Farmer at a ceremony held at the Heroes Park in Kumasi to acknowledge the important role that farmers play. President Akufuado reiterated government's commitments to operationalize a comprehensive plan to ensure Ghana is food secure. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The 33rd Farmers' Day celebration was on the theme, Farming for Food and Jobs. The week-long celebration brought farmers across the country together to showcase varied farm produce. 67 gallant farmers were rewarded for their immense contribution towards food security in the country. Speaking at the ceremony, President Akufuado said agriculture will remain a priority of government. The modernization of agriculture will thus remain a priority of government. Our prescription for tackling the problems of the agricultural sector is to operationalize a comprehensive plan to enhance food security, improve farm productivity, strengthen linkages with industry, and thereby create jobs. The president hinted that 51 dams in the Volta, Greater Accra and Central regions have been selected for rehabilitation under the One Village, One Dam program. The thrust of the key policies in pursuance of the objectives is to promote agribusiness by placing emphasis on agricultural value chain development in partnership with the private sector. We believe this is the way to transform Ghana's agriculture as we target to move from subsistence to a business-centered approach to agriculture. 58-year-old Philip Kweku Ajimine from Bono Afo region was adjudged the 2017 National Best Farmer. He was rewarded with a check of 100,000 US dollars. With the planting for food and jobs as one of government's top priorities, Mabel Akoto Kujo from the Volta region was the first runner-up. She was presented with a pickup vehicle. Rebecca Kome from the Greater Accra region came third. She also went home with a pickup vehicle. The 2017 National Best Farmer was grateful to the government for its planting for food and jobs policy and the One Village, One Dam initiatives. He was hopeful these two policies will enhance agriculture in the country. This year's event also saw special awards given to cocoa farmers. The national best cocoa farmer went to Yakubu Usman from Seshri in the western region. Now the Forestry Commission Task Force has intercepted 19 trucks of illegal lumber in a special operation in Accra. Each truck contained different species of lumber including rosewood that were illegally caught with chainsaw operators from various parts of the country. The exercise, according to the Forestry Commission, was informed by a recent market survey that uncovered astronomical increase in illegal lumber sale. The Forestry Commission says the high number of chainsaw or illegal lumber in the open market is premised on indiscriminate felling of trees. Both Ghanaians and foreign nationals are engaged in illegal lumbering in spite of a nationwide ban, according to the Forestry Commission. As a result, the Commission has mapped out new strategies, including the recruitment and training of personnel to detect and arrest perpetrators. The first major operation by the tax force resulted in the interception of 19 trucks loaded with different species of chainsaw lumber in Accra. The trucks have been taken to the Forestry Commission depot at Achimota Forest together with the lumbers pending further investigations to determine the actual species of lumber and the street value. We've asked our uh, workers in the field to also be very vigilant. So we are sending messages to those who are involved in illegal logging that uh, any lumber or log that they bring onto the market illegally, they will be arrested on the road. So we advise them to desist from that. About half of the seized trucks contained burned rosewood. 
So how far can the commission go to end the illegal practices? Anybody found to be complicit in dealing with illegal logging will definitely uh, be sanctioned. We are also making sure that when the, um, the trucks are arrested, we want to go back, uh, go back and find out where did the truck pass before getting to uh, this place and find those who are on that road and be able to apply sanctions uh, to those people. Owners of the trucks and lumber are to be charged after investigations. And you're still live here on News 360. We've got some more news for you in a few moments' time. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 360. In business news this evening, the Institute of Energy Security has projected fuel prices to be relatively stable at the local pumps during the first pricing window, which commences today, December 1. Principal research analyst at the IES, Richmond Roxin, says there's enough inventory to cover the two-week period. During the second pricing window in November, fuel prices went up between 3 to 6 percent at the local pumps. There have been changes in prices of finished products on the international markets. Petrol price went down by 2.9%, while diesel went up by 0.71% on the global market. Crude oil prices have gone up, with Brent crude averaging $63.75. We don't expect any significant price change. The dollar is rising very fast. Uh, previously it was 4.41. Uh, as we computed the, the data, it had gone to 4.48. Uh, we think the government must check um, the dollar rates, otherwise uh, the few gains that we're expecting to make in this particular window will be eroded. Per IES, inventory level is good for at least two weeks. Principal research analyst at the IES, Richard Roxin, said consumers should expect stable prices for the first pricing window in December. All things being equal, we expect uh, stable prices uh, this particular uh, window. Otherwise, uh, if there will be any price change, it will be because of uh, the high exchange rates that we are seeing on the market at the moment. Our members are not diverting premix fuel, so stop attacking our integrity and business. These are the words of industry coordinator for the Association of Oil Marketing Companies. President of the association, Kweku Ajamain Dua, urged the National Petroleum Authority to publish weekly orders of premix fuel made by the oil marketing companies. In January, the National Petroleum Authority implicated 200 trucks belonging to the oil marketing companies for diverting premise fuel. The NPA and the Ministry of Energy initiated investigations into the matter and implicated some of the oil marketing companies. Ten months on, those implicated are still working on diverting premise fuel. The NPA has therefore issued a stern warning to them, but some Ghanaians have lashed out at the NPA for reneging on its work. They accused the oil marketing companies for facilitating the diversion of this premium's fuel. Currently, the 200 trucks purported to have been diverted would amount to more than 600,000 cities per week. But the Association of Oil Marketing Companies says its members are not diverting premium's fuel. Our members will not do that unless they have been instructed to do so. I would say and city and say that they are all angels. No. You may get one or two, but the issue is trying to paint everybody, everybody black is what we are concerned with. You know, we have been doing business. After all, how many offices do the uh, uh, premise? Only few. There are a large majority who are not doing it for one reason or the other, because sometimes they, this premise thing, sometimes the people don't even pay. The association has asked the NPA to publish weekly companies which are receiving the premise fuel. Everybody can monitor. After all, it's a social product. It's something you and me pay any time we pay fuel, petrol or diesel. We are contributing to the subsidy so that it's open, so that we know that official folks will benefit. It again asked the MPA to sanction those found culpable in the act. And that's it for the business news this evening. There's more business news on our website. That's 3news.com. Back to ESA for some other stories. And residents of Ensoam and Environs will now breathe a huge sigh of relief with the launch of a water health treatment center. The facility is expected to produce over 24,000 liters of clean drinking water daily.
to help complement existing sources of potable water. In Sawam is the capital of the Kwiapem South Municipal Assembly of the Eastern Region. The town over the last year was faced with acute water shortage, resulting in an intervention of the Ghana Water Company drilling two boreholes. But almost a year on, the situation still persists in some parts of the town, as some residents continue to search for portable water. Some residents rely on hand dug out wells like this one under insanitary conditions. Right behind me is the Desu River. Due to the water shortage in the area, residents have been forced to fetch water from it for domestic use. At the Densu River comes Charity and her sisters to fetch from the river. They say they have no alternative source of water. We use the same water to bath to prepare food. I'm just from school. I want to go and prepare some food, so I, I've come to fetch water. The water is not good for our health. But solution to the lack of potable water has come with the launch of the Isawam Water Health Center, which will produce treated and purified drinking water using reverse osmosis and ultraviolet wave. The facility was donated by the Diego Foundation of the Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited as part of its corporate social responsibility at a cost of $100,000. This is part of being trusted and being respected is by investing in our communities and ensuring the sustainability of those communities and our business within them. So this is an important part of ensuring that we represent that face to Ghana. The facility has the capacity to produce a maximum of approximately 1,000 litres of clean water on a 24-hour basis to benefit over 10,000 people. Wherever we are, we want to help build thriving communities. People have actually started businesses out of this, and in turn, there's opportunity for government revenue. This is not the last this year. We're looking at doing a few more projects this year to help um, livelihoods in Ghana. Since 2007, Guinness Ghana Breweries Limited has intervened in supporting over 70 communities with water supply systems, which serve over 600,000 beneficiaries. And Accra Brewery Limited has sensitized residents of Agbogbloshin in Accra on the need to stay healthy and HIV free. The initiative reinforces the company's commitment to creating a healthier world and improving lives. Available statistics from Ghana AIDS Commission indicates a marginal decline in the rates of HIV infections in the country. Currently, prevalence rate is pegged at 1.6%. Over the years, Accra Brew Limited has marked World AIDS Day with a series of health outreach programs at the Abobulushi markets. In recent years, such efforts have expanded in scale and scope, including awareness creation and screening not only for HIV but other dreadful diseases, including malaria. Legal and Corporate Affairs Director of ABL, Ajoba Chiyama, Retreated the company's resolve to create a better world. It's something that happens annually, and we expect to continue to do this. We hope that as our, com our company continues to do well, we might be able to then make it a bigger event year after year. This year, ABO partnered with health professionals from the Accra Regional Hospital and the Malaria Foundation to sensitize residents of Abubushi on HIV and malaria. They are screening for two different kinds of disease conditions, HIV AIDS and then malaria. Those who are positive, we're giving them the treatment and then we're also giving mosquito insecticide nets to pregnant women and then children under five. Assembly member of the area, Kabiru Ashon Katai, lauded ABL for supporting Abubushi over the years. Every year they used to come to our aid with uh, either bola taxi or bola tanks and then F scream. We will thank them for what they have been doing for the community. One of the beneficiaries expressed satisfaction about the exercise. Residents also benefited from free HIV and malaria screening exercise. Now another day that's being marked today, in addition to Farmer's Day, is World AIDS Day. And I'm going to run us by the regional HIV pre prevalence in Ghana. This is for 2016, but it's still relevant in 2017. 
Now, we do see here that the Volta region has 2.7%, while the Bono and Hafo region marks 2.7% as well. What this reveals is that the region with HIV prevalence ranged from 27 in the Volta and Bono Hafo regions, which were the regions with the highest prevalence, to 0.7, that's in the northern region, which marked the lowest prevalence rate. And other regions, as we see on, as you see on your screen, the western region with 2.5%, percent the upper west with 2.5 and those at the bottom the upper east region with 1.7 percent and the northern region with seven percent the lowest prevalence rate is in fact in the northern region and just other statistics additional statistics with regards to hiv aids in the country it's important to note that the hiv pre prevalence by the age group 45 to 49 is in fact the highest in ghana at 5.6 percent followed by the age group of 35 to 39 which is at 3.5 percent and with the age group of 15 to 19 percent being the lowest at 0.6 percent and so those are just a few statistics with regards to hiv and aids in the country and the, among the young population is for 15 to 24 years remaining unchanged at 1.1 percent so it's interesting to note that 40 45 to 49 in fact has the highest hiv prevalence rate in the country and that's with regards to hiv aids in as much as there's a lot of focus on farmers day it's also world aids day it's important to note that and next is sports with nana kujwafre stay with us seven years stepped down after the military intervened following the sacking of Nangagwa as vice president. Opposition politicians have condemned the new cabinet as a betrayal of the public hopes and proof that the security forces so powerful under Mr. Mugabe remain in charge of the country. Well, and that should do for News 360 for this edition. My name is Issa Moni. Thanks for watching. Yes, and I'm Natalie Ford. We've got more news on our website, 3news.com. And the news at 10 will sign more our sister station. That's 3FM 92.7. Hope you had a lovely holiday. Have a good weekend. <laughs>